Welcome to Scaling New Heights, a program by engineers for engineers. We'll take you behind the scenes and provide a small glimpse of what it takes to create the software and services that make our modern world possible. As you'll learn, the problems aren't just technical, they're also human. Each executive on our program is a member of the ENG community. ENG stands for Engage, Network, Grow, and it's a peer network of more than 200 top technical executives at leading SaaS companies. They're each on a personal and professional journey to scale to new heights. Joining us today is Pooja Brown, VP of Engineering at Stitch Fix. Pooja is also one of the founding members of ENG, a peer network of VPEs and CTOs from leading SaaS companies, and that's how Pooja and I met. Pooja, welcome to Scaling New Heights. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here, Christine. You're currently the VPE at Stitch Fix, but prior to that, you spent a lot of years in another company where you went through a pretty major replatforming. In Scaling New Heights, we love to capture the hero's journey, and you went through that journey in four acts, which you described as, I got this, WTF, shift happens, and we did it. So with that as context, Let's just dig into act one. Sure, you know, it's funny when you say the hero's journey is like, I don't know if I remember being the hero or the heroine through that. But looking back, you know, replatforming at any company is hard, right? You know, you start, it's, if, you're, if you start with Greenfield, life would be amazing, right? But you know, if you're a business of any viability, right? You've had some success, you've inherited things, and now you're like, Oh shit, I got to I got to rethink this. And the reason why I sort of chose this story was that you know, I was I was originally hired to do a major replatforming. And when you look at a major replatforming, very standard sort of you have a large monolith written in a specific language. Uh, you want to start breaking it up in ways that more people can be productive. You want to start evolving it in a way that you're embracing modern technology. And then you sort of like very standard, like what does a scale footprint look of a monolith versus a distributed system? So all the sort of like goodness of what you want to do. And, you know, and I think about my sort of act one is first very excited to get the job, very excited about the project. It was sort of greenfield in an established system. You know, I was building a new team, starting to work on a brand new technology stack. At that time, you know, we were using um, Node and Backbone, even though we evolved that quite a lot, right? But sort of like the premise was take this monolith, build it into at least horizontal layers where you have a clear separation of API and front end. Right, evolve the front end application with a much more modern technology stack. So you could rapidly innovate, iterate, sort of from a CI, CD perspective, all the things that we want to see in software. So, you know, my act one, as I think of it, is like, I got this, right? It's like, I'm, you know, I'm going to work as hard as possible, build out the team. I, uh, you know, I knew all the nitty gritty details of everything that everything that you're gonna that you need to build this right is that and it, it's sort of like you you have this weird imposter syndrome as a like a woman leader also that keeps showing up which is like okay like did i really get this project did i really get this job am i you know but irrespective and the way to fight it was fake it till you make it work really hard you know 80 percent of success is just showing up and really know everything possible. So in my sort of merry own way, I'm, I thought I was doing the right thing. I'd build out a team. We were building software. We had a plan. We were reimagining this experience and sort of led me to act two. And act two, you said, is the WTF act. So why? You know, um, Despite all good intentions and choices of technology and the reason why we would do it, we weren't getting anywhere. There was, when I say getting anywhere is we were shipping software, but there was kind of no buy-in, right? It's like people weren't excited about it. People outside the team weren't excited about it. You know, you, every sort of, there was a lot of, 
you know, when you're reimagining something or you're replatforming or rebuilding, what you want is feature freezes on the old experience. Mm -hmm. And when you start seeing the old experience still evolving, still being sold, right? Those are very strong and passive signals about the viability of what you're working on, right? It's sort of like, okay, well, I'm never going to catch up, right? So, and when you, and what I realized was that like, it was, the sort of the what the fuck moment was all over the place, right? Is that in my sort of very like true mind, like we were, we had a greenfield project offer replatforming. Everybody was excited about it, I thought, right? And it, it's all about our delivery. But actually what this project was doing was it was impacting every aspect of this company, right? From a talent perspective, from a culture perspective, from a process perspective, technology, right? We were, we were like little tiny things, right? It's like the tooling we were using was different from the old tooling, right? The skill set we were looking for were different. We weren't, you know, we were looking for node-based developers versus .NET developers, right? We were building out a team in a different location versus the original location, right? Uh, our processes were different. The way the Git, you know, the version control systems we were using, like there was so much difference, right? right? And when you start thinking about that difference and the impact that it is going to cause in at least the success and adoption of the project, that's when you realize like, holy shit. Yeah. So that was, you know, that was kind of that, I call it the valley of despair, like everything, it, it's the darkest hour, but you made it through that. And that act three, you talk about a shift happened. So describe what that felt like at the time and how you made it through. You know, I really had to pivot my role into, instead of knowing all the details and the features and everything else that was happening, uh, and don't get me wrong, like you need to know that, right? That's just, I mean, that's as a leader, like the more abstracted you get, like the harder the decision making happens. But I had to shift my role into start bringing clarity and alignment around why we were doing it and be able to actually start understanding what people's expectations are from this project, as well as what people's concerns are. I think we were sort of like living in this wall of like, no, we're gonna do this, we're gonna be super successful, this is a much better way to build software, the experience that we're building is gonna be the best experience in the world, yet we had no evangelists about this project outside that team, right? So if you keep talking about it internally, sure, we can all be excited and drink the Kool-Aid. If everybody else around you what, who you are bringing this change to isn't as excited about you, that's a problem. And how did you get them excited? You know, you need to start, you need to first start bringing transparency into what's hard and what's easy, right? It's sort of like, and look at it as like sort of the three C's in my mind. It's like, start bringing a lot of clarity, right? It's like, what are you doing? Why you're doing it? What assumptions that you originally started with? Like, don't get me wrong. Anytime you're trying to do a replatforming, you're going to be bullish about the dates, which you're going to be always wrong about. It's going to take much longer than you th said it was, and it's probably going to have some unmet promises. In my situation, some of the unmet promises were we wanted to completely reimagine an experience, which I would highly not advise. <laughs> when you're replatforming the guts of the system, keep something the same way. But I can easily imagine to get funding and resourcing for something, you wanna make promises. You wanna make, hey, these are gonna be better customer experiences. People are gonna be able to interact with it. The site's not gonna look dated, right? But as you start peeling through it, all of those little experience changes really change the scope of your replatform, right? That's so super great like, learning. It's a and great learning. Like if I had to ever do that again, I would, I would say like, do one thing, don't do both. If you want to do an experience change, just do that. Don't so what I'm realizing as we talk, I, I, I want you to take the audience into the happy ending because I know you had one, um, but you are part of Eng. We've got to have you tell this story and all you learn to your peers because it is a really amazing story and I think everybody can identify. But you made it through um, and you had a happy ending. So take us to that last act. You did it. 
Um, and then I want to go forward into Stitch Fix. Sure. Yeah. You know, um, as you said, we did it, right? Just, there's a word in my head, which is like 100% feature parity, right? It's like, it's not just that, it's actually converting every last customer to this new, to this new experience, right? And that was, that was a work of, like it took an army to do this. But you know, like, it, like I, when I look back over it, I really feel like all the things that I said about like, comp, you know, being able to be clear about what you're doing, building evangelists, inviting dissent, right? Is like, let people tell you why they're really worried about this right, and be able to address it methodically, people have a lot of room for when you actually start communicating with them, right? If you create this wall around you, they're, they're gonna assume the worst. So, and then, the, but the last thing I say is like in the three C's is confidence, right? It's like all of that can only work if you really get shit done. And in my mind, get shit done was stay on schedule, release features week after week, be clear about what broke, what still works, right? Is like, just be transparent around it, but you cannot not ship. Well, you did a great job at change management and it's one of the hardest things that we all face as leaders. Now you come into this really big, new, exciting role at Stitch Fix. You inherit a modern platform to begin with, so you're not going through that journey that you've been through before, but now you have this huge opportunity. So give us just a little snapshot about how you're thinking of that. Sure. Um, very different environment, as you can tell. I've been here for about a year and a few months now. And, at, you know, we sort of grew up on the cloud, right, which means that we, we, we took a lot of our practices were already very modern, right? So we're looking at, you know, micro front ends. We're looking at a very service-based architecture. You know, you're all, already talking about a distributed system. Where I think, you know, what I'm excited about and, I, you know, you, you can start following our blog and start seeing things about it is that how do you bring all these services and systems to realize one goal? And our goal is how do you bring personalized retail at scale? Right. Is there, that's not an easy thing, right? It has to be personalized to you, but it has to work at scale. So I have no doubt you're going to do this, Pooja. Um, very excited to see what happens and we all need to turn, tune into the blog. Um, before I let you go, can we go through a very quick little lightning round so people can learn a little bit more about you? Sure, love to. So where is the first place you're going to travel once shelter in place ends? Paris. What's the last song you listen to? Oh, it's a old Bollywood song like yeah <laughs> like I, even if I even say it, nobody's going to <laughs> yeah you never know <laughs> coffee or tea coffee um are you currently reading or binge watching anything um I'm always binge watching two shows uh Gilmore Girls and West Wing so oh, okay yeah um and if you could do like anything outside of tech, what would you be? I have no idea. <laughs> it's a good thing you're, you're good at tech. No uh, idea. Very last question. What is the biggest or scariest thing you have ever personally scaled? I would say the journey that I walked you through. Yeah, it does sound like it. So that was a great story to pick. Pooja, thank you for sharing your hero's journey and teaching us about what you learned. It was great to have you on Scaling New Heights. Thank you for having me here, Christine. If you want to hear more stories or learn about Eng and how to become a member of the community, visit scalar.com. That's S-C-A-L-Y-R.com. Thank you.